This one's a very different DIY mini PC kit. We've seen something like the Azeroc Disk Mini, which merges a desktop CPU with an STX motherboard and sodium RAM. But Mini's forum has gone a different way, merging a desktop ITX motherboard and mobile CPU with their BD795i SE motherboard. They call it Mobile on Desktop. And while it has some quirks, it works pretty damn well. On the one hand, you do get to choose your own parts. On the other, there are more limitations than with a desktop ITX board. So, what do you need to bring to the table for this DIY project? Well, if you want a complete build, you'll need a 120mm PWM fan for the CPU, a case, DDR5 sodium RAM, NVMe SSD, and an SFX or ATX power supply, depending on your case. An M.2 wireless card and antennas are also required if you want Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The board features a powerful AMD Ryzen 7945HX mobile CPU embedded on the motherboard. We've already seen it featured in the Mini's Forum G7PT Gaming Mini PC, and it's an impressive 16-core, 32-thread processor with more CPU performance than your typical flagship found in an AMD-featured Mini PC. It's not upgradable or replaceable. Pricing for the board comes in at $463 US dollars on the official website or $400 on Amazon.com. Mini's forum has included a big heatsink on the CPU, which only needs a 120mm fan attached to it. And I find that strange. If they're already including the heatsink, they may as well have included a fan as well. Another oddity is the M.2 wireless slot. Included are pigtail connectors and a card caddy to attach to the board but no antennas or actual card. A cool feature of the BD795 ISC is that it includes a PCIe Gen 5 X16 slot for a graphics card. This way you get some serious GPU performance without the need of a USB 4 or Oculink eGPU. For storage, dual M.2 2280 Gen 4 X4 slots are included, but no SATA ports at all, which is still a common feature on regular ITX boards. Another oddity showing up here are the DDR5 sodium slots, but since it's a mobile CPU, I guess it makes sense. They max out at just DDR5 5200 mega transfers. There are three fan headers, with one being used for the CPU. There's also a USB 3 5 gigabit header for your front USB panel on the case. The IO shield is not pre-installed, but can be screwed on, which is nicer than a loose one, and the rear IO features red, green, and blue audio jacks, Realtek 2.5 Gigabit LAN, dual USB 2, Wi-Fi antenna holes, CMOS reset, USB-C 10 Gigabit with display capability if using the integrated graphics, HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4, and dual USB 3 10 Gigabit. With a typical case front panel, you'll have a total of 7 USB ports. The original plan was to just use the board on a test bench, but I didn't think it would do it justice. So I went ahead and got everything for an ITX build. It consists of 32GB of DDR5 5600, which will only run at 5200. For the OS drive, I'm using a 1TB Gen 3 NVMe drive, and I only realized after unboxing that a 120mm PWM fan for the cooler was required. So, needing a quickie fix, I met up with Brian from Techia City, who hooked me up with this fine specimen. We had a long chin wag, and our bromance flourished. For the case, I chose the Cooler Master NR200, the only cheap, non-trash ITX case available locally. It's big, but at least supports a large GPU. An RTX 4070 Super graphics card is going inside, along with an SFX power supply. The CPU cooler is too tall for the included rear 90mm fan, so that's been removed. I've placed the additional Cooler Master 120mm fan at the top for exhaust. Oh, and a tip for you, if you do plan to get this board, when installing Windows, make sure to use one of the USB 2 ports. It fails to install using USB 3. There was also a BIOS update, so I took care of that before starting all my tests. I also did check out Ubuntu off a USB drive, and it worked fine with my build. Mini's forum also sent me their 15.6 inch dual screen portable monitor to try out with this board. It's 1080p, and both screens can power and display off just the one USB-C port on the back which is really cool. I'll link it in the video description. Okay, so for the benchmarks, I'll be pitching the motherboard against other gaming-focused minis we've looked at previously, and also against the latest couple generation AMD flagship mini PCs with integrated graphics. In single-core Cinebench, the 7945HX is one of the best results. 
only slightly beaten by the pricey HX370. The 7945HX is by far the fastest in multi-core Cinebench, with this board having the best result. Nothing can quite touch the 16-core 32-thread BC. It has a 40% improvement over the next best 12-core HX370 chip. In Geekbench Single Core, it's a similar result to Cinebench. It's one of the top performers. However, the multi-core result drops to just a 7% increase, which isn't too impressive. In the H.264 video encoding test, the 7945HX is at the top once more, but this short test shows a result closer to the one we saw with Geekbench. The longer AV1 video encoding result is much better, with around a 20% improvement. Moving on to graphics with 3 d Mark, I've got the 4070 Super result if you're interested, and also the Radeon 610M integrated graphics for the 7945HX. For long-time viewers, it's around double the score of the ultra-budget Intel N100 mobile chip. With a PCIe slot, Mini's forums motherboard is definitely geared at throwing in a graphics card. The game tests show the 7945HX is a powerful mobile chip, easily pushing hundreds of frames with the esports games to help you compete. Of course, the graphics side depends on which GPU you throw in it. For the other games, I tried various 4K settings and wanted to see if there were any issues with 1% lows or stability. But gaming on the 7945HX with a discrete GPU was all good. The final gaming test is emulation, and 4K Wii U is pretty darn nice. With PS3 emulation, Killzone 2 manages to hover around the 40fps mark, which is also better than expected for this tough to emulate title. On to audio and video. Latency Mon gave a pass for the audio latency test with Cinebench Multicore running in the background. The 7945HX is plenty powerful for video editing as well, and you can even pair it with an Intel Arc graphics card to get that sweet, sweet quick sync decoding. Idle power draw will depend on your graphics card. As you can see, it adds a lot compared to just the figure using integrated graphics. Same deal with the maximum power draw. You can easily get away with using a good 500 watt power supply for the 4070 Super Combo I used. CPU temp will depend on your fan, but shouldn't vary too much. It stayed under the 90C inside the case and didn't thermal throttle during my tests. Fan noise will also depend on your graphics card, case fans, etc. But here's a figure for the board using integrated graphics. Mashing the delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. In advanced onboard devices settings, NVMe RAID is available and resizable bar is enabled by default. ACPI settings has wake on LAN. Hardware monitor allows the default fan settings to be tweaked. AMD CBS is where you can change the CPU power limit and set the AC power loss setting. Okay, and now it's time for the pros and cons. The Mini's Forum BD795i SE features a powerful 7945HX embedded on the board. Performance is really good and pretty close to its desktop 7950X cousin. Dual Gen 4 M.2 slots and a Gen 5 PCIe slot is included. 
There's good value here when comparing a desktop ITX motherboard and 7950X CPU combo. However, you need to bring your own 120mm CPU cooling fan, which is odd, when the heatsink is included. No M.2 wireless card or antennas are provided, and there are no SATA ports for further storage options. Finally, you can't replace or upgrade the CPU, so this is a one and done option. Mini's Forum's BD795i SE motherboard is a very interesting product, allowing you to build a larger mobile CPU based mini PC using the ITX form factor. While there are smaller DIY mini PC options like the Azeroc Disk Mini, this one allows you to add a desktop GPU instead of relying on integrated graphics. Let me know what you guys think of it and if you'd prefer a mini PC using the 7945HX but don't want to build it yourself, check out the Mini's Forum G7PT Mini PC which also includes a mobile graphics chip for some really nice gaming power. You can find that review right here. Cheers!